What we're going to talk about here is, is Simone de Beauvoir's concept of existentialism and ethics. And, and, and Simone kind of focuses on a, what kind of ethical policies can be devised in a world of ambiguity, freedom, objectivity, and individuality. And, and Simone starts with the idea that, that they, the world is ambiguous. And, and with an ambiguous world, you know, there are, are many different options, um, but not the fact that, say, all roads lead to Rome doesn't mean that they're all equally effective in getting there. Matter of fact, some of them may never even get you to Rome. But a, uh, the idea is that a, this is an ambiguous world. Now, the neat thing about that is that the current concepts that we're learning with regards to, to let's say, John Holland's ideas on complexity is that in the, in the world of complexity, the best is the enemy of good enough. So there isn't the best road to Rome. There's a, all different kinds. And so the idea of ambiguity is really being proven out in today's concept of complexity and how we deal with complexity. So, so they're kind of in sync. And then she goes on and she talks about the second thing she talks about is freedom. It, 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 what does being free mean? And, and she says, that, you know, the main thing is that we make the choice, but then we own it. She really wants to focus in on the fact that we have to take responsibility for the choice, that the, the ethics equals we own the ends and the means we own the, for all of our choices. And so we, we can't blame the, uh, the, the world of money or the, or the church or the state for, for, for decisions. We can't join those groups and say we're going to go with whatever way they want to go. We basically have to take some kind of responsibility for every single decision that we do. We have to own it. And this is in sync a lot with what Kaufman talks about when he talks about the 10 strategies that decide a phobia that prevent somebody from becoming an autonomous person. So, so the other third point that she wants to talk about is objectivity. When she talks about objectivity, she talks about the fact that subjects and objects really can't know each other. And, and you know, that, that this idea that, that one person, that, that there are values such as love and stuff like that, that we can really know. She said subjects can never really know another subject. That really isn't possible. And if you look at this picture, that grandfather cannot know that the granddaughter loves him the same way he loves her. He can, he can hope and whatever, but he can't really know because all other subjects are really objects to each subject, right? And then when you look at the facticity, the other issue though, is that in the world in which you're functioning, we need others, that it's a world of others. And so we need to come up now with, in terms of an objective world, is, is how, how we function in that world of others when we can never really know. And so she says, you know, what we do is we look at building an ideal man, an ought, our own ought in our own head. And we, we, we basically embrace ambiguity, recognizing that we also have to cooperate. So it's a, it's a mix, a marriage of ambiguity and cooperation. And then how does that happen? And when you look at the, all of the different complexities of a particular individual, right? And, and you know, that an individual, you know, you want to kind of go after freedom, responsibility they're becoming. Meanwhile, they are xenophobic, selfish, zero sum. They're exceptionalist. I mean, you know, they, they, they have, they're influenced strongly by the, by the world of money or their economics, by the church and by the state. And not only that, but, but we're finding out that none of those things are really singular and, and they're like black and white. Instead, they're, they'll go wrong the whole spectrum. So now we have this individual looking across the spectrum at the world of others and, and, and the facticity and how do we function in that world. And she says, we just have to learn how to welcome that ambiguity. And, and uh, yeah, so, so for her, a, basically we take this responsibility as an individual for the human life game, our own responsibility for our own human life game, right? And so the best way to do that is to maximize the individual's opportunity for freedom of selecting, but also minimize the need for selecting, right? And you can minimize the need for selecting by basically, if you take the table of values and you take values like faith, hope, love, grace, joy, justice, peace, and service, and if you remove the ones that are false social values that represent bad faith, then, then you really only have to worry about uh, minimize the need for selecting things that regards to courage and, and a, uh, uh, intellectual integrity, honesty, and ambition, which is a value that I stole from, a, uh, from Kaufman. It's a mix of, hum of humility and ambition. Thank you.